We're now going to deal with one of the most misunderstood movements of the 20th century, one that tends to be the butt of any joke about modern art, and that is Cubism. Now, Cubism is a complete departure from any form of illusionism in art. In other words, we're not making an attempt, or the artists of Cubism are not making an attempt to recreate reality. They're getting rid of the idea of creating a three-dimensional illusion on two-dimensional space. Now, they're interested in Africa and developing a way to view figures from multiple perspectives at once, almost integrating time into the image. Imagine looking at your hand and you want to show the palm of your hand because that's pretty interesting, but you also want to see your fingernails with the fingers extended. You would need to move the fingernails around to the inside surface of your fingers. That's exactly what cubism is doing. They're trying to pick the most interesting elements of whatever makes a certain form and then show them all to us at once. Now, the cubist style emphasizes the flat two-dimensional surface of the picture plane. They are not trying to create three-dimensional space. So they are rejecting the traditional techniques of perspective, foreshortening, modeling, chiaroscuro, the use of light and dark to create volume. And they're refuting time-honored theories of art as the imitation of nature. They're finally saying, you know what? We're going to take this one step further. We're going to move beyond even making an attempt to imitate nature. We're finally moving beyond nature as a source, really. Now, the Cubist painters were not bound to copying form, texture, color, or space. Instead, they presented this new reality that depicted radically fragmented objects whose several sides were seen simultaneously. It would be like having an iPhone and seeing the little Apple symbol and camera, as well as the home button in the front surface of the screen, all in the same image, even though they're on two different sides. Now, Cubism will derive its name from remarks there made by the painter Henri Matisse and the critic Louis Vauxel, who incidentally is also key to naming the Fauves, both of whom described Brock's painting seen here as composed of cubes. In Brock's work, the volumes of the houses, the cylindrical forms of the trees, and the tan and green color scheme are reminiscent of another piece, one by Cezanne, one of his landscapes, which were deeply, or which deeply inspired the Cubists in their first stage of development until 1909. And what we're looking at is not one movement, we're really looking at the evolution of a movement when we look at Cubism. You could argue that you could break it into three, four, or more parts as we delve into this subject. Now, I had said that they were interested in Africa. What they're doing is they're looking at something called primitivism. Now, primitivism is less an aesthetic movement than a sensibility or cultural attitude that informed diverse aspects of modern art. It refers to modern art that alludes to specific stylistic elements of tribal objects or non-Western forms. Is a fancy way of saying that these artists, the Cubists, as well as what we've seen in German Expressionism and elsewhere, are looking at African pieces, primarily African pieces at this time, and incorporating them based on their understanding into their art. And that understanding is not accurate. It rarely, if ever, is. Not a shortcoming of the artist. It's just the way these artifacts were handled, and we'll get into that a little bit later. And this is a product of colonialism. Now, between 1870 and 1900, Africa will be broken up amongst the European powers. And we're talking Belgium getting the Congo, an area that's 50 times bigger than the actual nation of Belgium. France takes much of Northern Africa. Great Britain takes much of Western Africa. And why are they doing this? They're primarily doing it for resources. They want the things that are there. And there are only two countries that will not be colonized early in uh, 
the 20th century, and that will be Ethiopia, who will be colonized later, and Liberia, which is basically an American state. That's a whole different ballgame, but look into Liberia if you're interested. So what's happening here? Why does this matter? Well, these colonial powers, specifically in our case the French, are picking things up in all of these colonies and hauling them home and going, look at how awesome this thing is. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to put it in a museum. And that will be key to primitivism in Cubism shortly. <laughs>